राजीव भैया नमस्ते 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 गणेश जी yesterday we had discussed about uh, this lecture number 3 about happiness and prosperity the basic human aspirations which are continuity of happiness and prosperity we were discussing about prosperity so yesterday we had discussed that prosperity is a feeling and for that feeling uh, to be ensured in us we need to be able to identify our need of physical facility ensure the availability or production of that physical facility these two are essential for having that feeling of prosperity in continuity and of course it it involves the body as well as the physical facility or the you know things outside so ensuring right utilization of the physical facility is important sharing it the the balance that is left over from right utilization for myself sharing it in the family in the society ultimately for the well being of all that is essential and even after that things are left over so those need to be stored for future use, use. for right utilization in the future so that was being discussed yesterday so we'll continue from there when i'm trying to work for uh, this uh, physical facility we have said that there is importance of relationships also i have to fulfill my relationships also when i go to fulfill my relationships then i find that i require more physical facility so now Uh, how do i really make the assessment of my need how do i make the right program so that i have enough when we go about identifying the need of physical facility i mean one is that we can identify it at the individual level you know how much food i need to nurture my body how much clothes i need to protect my body from heat and cold and then how much you know kind of shelter is required to protect me my body from excessive cold or rain or things like that so that's one level where i can identify my need of physical facility but it can be better done at the level of family because uh, uh, this family is an integral part of you know human uh, existence so it is possible to identify the need at the level of family and then at the level of family it is possible to produce more than what is required so if we rightly identify our need of physical facility at the level of family <coughs> we can also see that <coughs> this whole family put together has the potential to produce more than what is required so ultimately this prosperity has to be defined at the level of family as well because the needs are better defined in the family and production is also better defined in the family so at the level of family prosperity can be defined but what is important is that the whole family as such has to have this what we are calling as right understanding and right feeling so if we have the right understanding and the right feeling we can see that we can be with a you know a uh, relationship of mutual fulfillment with each other within the family and when that mutual fulfillment is there at the level of relationship and of course at the level of understanding individually then <clears throat> the need for physical facility becomes quite defined you know quite defined quite definite and 
we can produce with relationship you know so when we are in relationship we are able to work better with the rest of nature plan better and execute better with the rest of nature and produce more than what is required in fact today if you see 50% or more than 50% of our resources in our kind of uh, time and effort is spent to maintain relationship even in the colleges i see you know, in the academic institutions the teachers have and teachers and management has lot of opposition for each other and therefore they have to spend lot of their effort and time trying to combat each other so if only we have this relationship in the family and in the mutual fulfillment then we can certainly plan our work with the rest of nature in a much better way and execute it in a much better way and as a result we can produce more than what is required so when we go for production there are two things one is our capacity to produce through our body and the availability of the resources in the uh, nature so if we study we'll find that both of these things are there you know available in abundance abundance in this sense it is far more available than what is required for our physical needs so the whole family has to be involved right so we have to work for the family you know in the sense of helping them to develop their own understanding you know and this feeling of relationship so that's one major task which we have to work with so when we are talking about family instead of trying to produce or you know acquire more and more to satisfy their you know undefined need it is more important to help them to explore within and identify you know first have this right understanding and right feeling and then identify their physical needs so once we are able to identify our physical needs as a family and if we have this right understanding and right feeling among us then we can better plan our work with rest of nature and we can certainly produce more than what is required for the whole family in fact as i said you know we are already producing six times more than what is required and if you look at the village you know the village in general is producing three times four times you know what is required for all the people in the village and they are the one who are feeding these people in the city most of the city people if you see you know are not producing directly so they are feeding the city people so even now if the family is having this right understanding and right feeling and they can identify their physical needs they are already producing more than what is required and potentially they can certainly produce far more than what is required so that is what seems to be the you know kind of possible solution yes does it answer your question yes it does but since we are saying that uh, you mentioned that uh, prosperity is a feeling so perhaps we uh, should just minimize our needs for physical facilities uh, since it is more to do with the feeling we are not saying minimize our needs what we are saying is we have to identify our need so these physical needs are not undefined they are not unlimited as we believe right but then we have to identify identify our physical need and for that we certainly need right understanding so with right understanding we have to identify our physical needs and when we try to identify our physical need we find that it is required in a limited quantity anyway so not that i have to reduce my need or i have to minimize my need what we are saying is that we have to identify our need so for example you know if you look at an adult let's say he would need five chapatis to fill his stomach you know now these five chapatis can be identified you know how many chapatis are required and we are not saying you know that have two chapatis even if it, you know five chapatis are required 
for nurturing our body. But we are saying that at least identify that five chapatis are required. But it is not undefined. It is not unlimited. So when you identify the need, most of us will find that we already have far more than what is required. For example, I ask this question in every you know, uh, workshop as to how many people know how many pairs of clothes they have. So I'm just asking them, can you recall how many pairs of clothes you have? And most of them are not able to do that. Even. Hardly 10% of the people raise their hand saying that, yes, we you know, identify how many pairs of clothes we have. Now, what does it mean? It means that we have so many clothes, so many pairs of clothes that we don't even keep record of how many there are. And we still go on buying more and more. So as I was discussing that day that, you know, at the most 12 pairs of clothes, let's say, you know, would be required four pairs for every season, or it can be little more or less. But the important thing is that it is not undefined. It is not unlimited. We can identify it. With right understanding, we can identify it. And when we identify it, then we see that we already have more than what is required. Right? So what we are saying is not minimize your need, but identify your need. And when you identify your need, most of us will find that we already have more than what is required. So we'll have this feeling of prosperity within. Right? And if you don't have, we can work for that defined need and ensure more than what is required. So in that sense, I was saying that if people are able to identify their need, then what is required for the whole world, we are already producing six times more than what is required for the whole world. But the problem there, if you see, is not that of physical resource. The problem is that of you know, distribution. With six times what is required, still there are people who are dying of hunger. Not because there is less, but because it is ill distributed. And if you look at this problem of distribution, it is problem of relationship. Because we don't feel related to the others, you know, we are not willing to, you know, kind of share. Not only not willing to share, we are willing to exploit. So this is an issue of relationship. And if you look at the issue of relationship, ultimately it is an issue of understanding. So this is scarcity of resource in all over the world or people dying of hunger all over the world is not because of the limitation of resources, but it is because of lack of right understanding, leading to lack of relationship, leading to lack of proper distribution. And therefore, even though we have six times what is required, not everybody is getting enough to eat. So we have to work for right understanding, we have to work for relationship. And on the basis of that relationship, we can work for right kind of distribution, proper distribution. And that will ensure prosperity for everyone all over the world, not only my family. If we look at our tradition, I mean, uh, uh, you know, in uh, our saints and all, they have talked about being happy by renouncing everything. So, since our basic aspiration is happiness, can that also be a way to go about it? See, what Rajiv was saying, you know, uh, there are three possibilities. When it comes to physical resources, there are three possibilities. One is the right utilization. The other is the indulgence. And third is this, you know, giving away or, you know, uh, what is generally un understood from uh, uh, renunciation. That even if I need it, I don't 
you know, use it. Or I think that this physical facility is the cause of bondage, and therefore I, you know, you know, throw it away. Now, if you ask yourself what it will be naturally acceptable to you, right? so the answer is right utilization. That is very clear. Yes. Now, with this answer, now if you see, <clears throat> what is being said is that let us identify our need and you know consume as much as is required. Why unnecessarily accumulate, right? And indulge. So this is what is being said that I should be able to identify my needs. I should not unnecessarily pile up, you know, kind of add things to my needs, right? I must identify what is basically the need. Then I should be able to produce more than what is required. And I should not, you know, <clears throat> accumulate and I should not overindulge. So when we are overindulging, that is the problem. Right. And I was mentioning that this overindulgence is causing problem for you, for your body and for the society. So what they are saying when you are saying renunciation, in fact there are, I remember one of the days I was mentioning that when I understand what is right and what is not right, then I practice to live with what is right. And that is called abhyas. Right? And I also make effort to get away from what is not right. right? That is Vairagya. So abhyas is practicing for doing what is right. And Vairagya is getting rid of you know, what is not right. So if I was unnecessarily consuming something, I should not. That's a very simple thing. Right? Because that will not only create problem for others, it will also create problem for my body you know, and my own mentality. So it has been suggested that first identify what is your real needs. Then whatever is the real need, certainly ensure the right utilization of it. And what is not your real need, you had just, you know, either uh, accumulated it because of your own wrong assumptions or because of some pressure from the society. Now you decide that, okay, it is not my real need, so I will not indulge into it. So that is what is being said <clears throat> by all these sages and saints and this season, all these people. Now, the problem is that when we are looking at them from the perspective of people who are overindulging, right, then we feel that they are renouncing. Yes. Yes. That is the problem. True. But of course, I would also mention and give a point of a kind of caution that in society, you know, people who <clears throat> observe this kind of people, right, and feel, you know, inspired by them, and they do this by ensuring right understanding in themselves and right identification of the need then it is fine. But many times what happens is that these people who are inspired, instead of developing that right understanding in themselves and therefore identifying their real needs, they start imitating. So when they start imitating without understanding, they are the people who feel that they are renouncing it by force under the pressure, pressure of these people, you know, who have understood and have given up because it was not necessary. 
such people create problem in the society <clears throat> and our society which has been a very old society we have many such examples and this has created problem so we have to be careful careful that we you know certainly feel inspired by such people who are taking so little from the society and giving so much but that does not mean that we start copying them imitating them without understanding so we have to understand we have to identify our need we have to see that it is not necessary therefore <clears throat> you know they are not taking it this clarity is required otherwise we'll have people who have just given up because they felt you know sometime inspired by these people but they did not do the necessary you know work in terms of understanding in terms of identifying their needs so they become pseudo sense <clears throat> Mm. Uh, we, we do that uh, uh, overeating, and then we take that hazmola, and then we do dieting also. Uh, sometimes. Yes, this is what we are doing. On the other hand, you know. yes. On the other hand, what we are doing is we are not identifying our need. We are over, you know, consuming, and that obese, you know, obese people. I was talking about. They overeat. They accumulate so much of fat, so much so that they now it is very difficult for them even to walk. So they have created a problem for other people, shortage of resources, and they have created a lot of problem for themselves. Mm. Yes. One question that comes up is that um, we are saying prosperity. has to do with the feeling and has to do with uh, having more than enough of physical facility so uh, our need for prosperity is continuous so how can this uh, be continuous when we are talking about physical facilities which are temporary this is a uh, interesting thing you know uh, i mean in general uh, what i have to say about this is that if you look at this world you know there are two types of things one is which is changing with time the other is which is not changing with time but even the ch- thing which are changing with time they are under certain basic rules basic harmony which are not changing with time right so they have this continuity this we have to understand this we have to understand that though there are things which are of the nature of changing with time anitya but they follow certain rules certain laws certain natural laws certain basic harmonies right which are not changing so for example if you look at a seed a seed will germinate and develop into a tree right grow into a tree and then that tree will give rise to many seeds right okay and this will go on so seed giving rise to tree and tree giving rise to seed and that is how this tradition of this trees are continuing now if you look at particular seed right after germination it is gone right it has changed with time but if you look at this rule this basic law that seed gives rise to tree and tree gives rise to seed this law is not changing so if you can understand this basic laws basic harmonies then what i get out of this is this continuity you know in myself so now if you apply to this particular case we can see that we have this body which is changing with time it has those physical needs and these physical things are also changing with time 
but we can also see that at any point of time if i see the amount of physical facility that is needed for all my family members and the amount of facility that can be produced by family members this will be always more than what is required because nature has enough provision enough provision is there in nature in india for example the average land availability for all the people on and in india is around 0.4 acres per person cultivable land which means for 10 people there is 4 acres of land so for a family of 10 people we have 4 acres of land on an average and 2 acres of land is enough to grow all that we need as food and other things so we already have twice the land required you know for all the people in india so this kind of <clears throat> availability is always there in nature you know for human being and it is there for all animals right the animal kingdoms also you can see this that <clears throat> so this rule is there this basic harmony is there which we can understand and when we understand this we will have this feeling of prosperity and continuity so this prosperity or the feeling of prosperity is born out of this understanding of this natural laws which are there in continuity and now in the light of this natural law i can identify my need for physical facility and i can produce more than what is required at any given point of time but that assurance is always there okay so the the physical facility is limited but the feeling can be continuous yes limited in time not only quantity physical facility is limited in quantity limited in time mm -hmm. but i require physical facility in a limited quantity anyway i require less than what i can produce so there is a possibility of you know prosperity all the time that i can see when we were young uh, these kind of issues they are quite motivating but as we grow up we go to work we interact with other people we sort of uh, go with the flow go with the you know what every everybody in society is saying and doing so isn't that the case for most of us yeah and then uh, we also find that this willingness for labor that willingness is not there to you know, do our own work also somebody else does that work oh, you mean at the uh, later age so even at a young age the uh, you know somebody else is doing the work so that uh, or i'll ask this later on that yeah i think it will not connect to this just yeah so <clears throat> what uh, we are saying is that these issues you know that we are raising and responding to these issues are of concern you know and they are very important in all age whether we are young or grown up or old right but when we are young we are very enthusiastic about it we think that these issues are important and something can be done about them you know and something should be done about them so we are very enthusiastic about it so we feel motivated as we grow old you know for many reason for our own lack of clarity or lack of support from the family or lack of, lack of kind of favorable environment from the society we start feeling that it is not easy to do it you know something about it right so either we are not clear about it or we are not able to do it we are not successful then we start 
growing this pessimism. So that enthusiasm that was there in the young age is slowly lost. But that is lost for all issues, right? Even, you know, what you think should be done in the family, you, know, you are very enthusiastic to begin with, and then you work for it, and you don't get the cooperation. And then you feel that, no, no, nothing can be done. You know, people don't change. In fact, not only that they don't pay attention and work on it, many times they react. So you think, okay, that's it, you know, leave it. So you become very pessimistic over a period of time. So this is what is happening. At the level of individual, we do not have the clarity, so we are stuck. At the level of family, we are not getting the cooperation, so we are stuck. At the level of society, we are not having this favorable environment, so we are stuck. But these issues, you know, they remain important for us. They remain important for us. In fact, one of the interesting uh, things that we have observed <sighs> while working on this PHV is that, you know, even old people, very senior professors, directors, vice chancellors, when they listen to this and when they see that, you know, this is something which is being accepted, right? They are very enthusiastic about it. You know, even at the age of 60, 65, you know, they are so motivated to do something. So that is of concern even for them, but probably they thought that, okay, nothing much can be done, you know. So they were just uh, not talking about it. But when they see the possibility, they are active. They are very active. And we have many of such people, you know, and fairly old people, 60 plus, who are running this uh, whole effort on EHB. So they are willing to invest their self, their body, their resources. But they should see the possibility. Either they should have the clarity. On the basis of that, they see the possibility. Or they have the cooperation. So we have a team. So we get you know, kind of support from the team. So then we are enthusiastic, even at the age of 65, 70. And then we should create an environment in the society. So if then they find a favorable environment, they will become enthusiastic again. One of the participants in this is 82 years of age, Captain S.C. Tripathi ji, who is now 82 years of age. And uh, he is there for all these sessions for last six months. Yeah, um, from, you know, I understand, okay, there is a need for physical facilities is limited, but uh, like you're saying, the environment around may be different. So then it becomes very difficult. Like if my family doesn't support me in this, so if children, they are not able to see this limited physical facility. They get upset when they want things and we don't provide those things. So then I feel like I have to earn more and more to be able to satisfy those needs. So how to go about it? I mean, I will say two things. Number one, I must work for their understanding and their feeling. Help them to understand and help them to have this right feeling for each other. So that will be a better help. Right? Yes. If we do that, they will be able to identify their physical needs better than what they are doing now. Right? And as I said, then we can all together identify the physical need of the family and produce more than what is required. The problem today is that number one, we do not have this right understanding, this right feeling. The members of the family do not have this. Therefore, they are not able to identify their physical need. So that is one problem. They think that their needs are unlimited. And they expect that whoever is the responsible member of the family has to fulfill that. And second thing is that what Rajulji was just mentioning, 
that they do not have the mentality to work, right? to put the labor to the rest of nature in order to produce or in order to even do the you know day to day activities. So even the activities which are very common in the family, in the house, we are not willing to do that. So we cannot keep our things clean, we cannot wash our own plates, we cannot cook our food, right? we cannot wash even our clothes. You know. So all this also we are not willing to do. So now everything becomes you know, a need which has to be fulfilled from outside. And then you have to earn more and more. So what I would say that we have to, two things to do. Number one is to have help, you know, this members of the family to develop this right understanding, this right feeling and that willingness to work. Right? Then things will be much better. And second thing I would say that in the meantime, maybe you'll have to work more and earn more, but that's not a real solution. You know, to go with the family, you know, and with that sense of responsibility for the family, you may continue to work more and earn more you know, to fulfill their needs of physical facility. But certainly you should be sure that you will never be able to satisfy them if they are not able to identify their need of the physical facility. Very true so, what you're saying. That's very yeah, true. True. I think it is important. Uh, we as parents also, we must uh, take care of that. We don't think about uh, understanding, talking about understanding. We only focus on physical facility part more. Yeah, we don't focus on this understanding. We don't even focus on relationship. Like when we ask the child, you know, how is your study going? We don't ask how you are. Yes. Yes. So the child also starts feeling that what is important is the study, not me. So this is an issue of relationship. That we are giving more importance to this, you know, study because we think that that will fetch a job and a physical facility. We are not giving more importance to the child. So child also starts giving more importance to physical facility than to relationship. Mm. So we have to work for understanding, we have to work for relationship that is of priority over the physical facility. And through that we can communicate or you know, start this process of exploration within each of the family members. And if that happens, then they will be able to identify their physical needs. And then we all together, you know, produce more than what is required. Otherwise, we'll be working day and night, you know, doing all kind of corruption and everything and bringing this money home. And instead of this, you know, people in the family ensuring right utilization of it, they will over, over indulge. Okay. And many of them will get spoiled. I mean, if we see so much talk has happened in our tradition also about such issues, but still people are going on accumulating, going on exploiting. So it looks like, you know, will it ever change all this? See, this is the important thing, you know. Um, what is this main, you know, stream of the society is doing? What is the main stream of the education is doing? This is important. If the mainstream of the society is promoting this indulgence, overindulgence, you know, overconsumption, and if the education is preparing the minds for it, then there is no way out. There is no way out. People will continue to think that consumption is the, you know, sign of standard of living and they will think in terms of consuming more and more. And for that, they will think of accumulating more and more and exploiting others if necessary <laughs> to accumulate that more and more. If 
this you know mentality to work with rest of nature to labor with rest of nature is not promoted in the education in the society then people will not be willing to work now if consumption is you know over consumption is promoted and production is not promoted labor is not promoted then what will you do you will exploit others you will exploit others first by the legal means so called legal means and if that legal means are not available then you will do through illegal means and that is what is corruption so that will continue to happen right this is what i was saying that unless you bring these things in the mainstream education we are in trouble if the mainstream education is giving a mindset of over consumption you know and not working for production not doing labor then we are bound to get into this problem of accumulating and problem of exploiting others okay. now if you are doing something good outside this mainstream education so we have some ashram we have some institutions which is trying to teach all these things okay. then it will not work that number will always be very small very limited okay and therefore the mainstream of the society will go on accumulating go on you know kind of exploiting each other with the hope that they will get happiness somewhere sometime you know with undefined accumulation so whatever is being said by this uh, you know people in the past you know who have understood life much better that has to come to the mainstream education if it does not come to the mainstream education then what is happening will continue mm. will continue and when it comes to accumulating also i think you know when we talk in terms of food uh, then i can see that uh, there is only so much i can store or you know use and the rest will get spoiled but when it comes to the monetary terms of you know um, when it comes to money then i can just keep accumulating more and more and more in the bank and uh, there is no end to that yeah i'll come to that but regard to the last question i yes. was saying that this has to come to the mainstream education and mainstream of the society right mm. and what is that so what we are saying is that we have to have this right understanding and right feeling at the individual level we have to have this identification of need of physical facility and you know willingness to produce at the family level and at the level of society we have to have a system which supports and promotes you know this kind of lifestyle so three things has to be done if we really want to adopt a way of life where we have identified the need where we are producing more than what is required and where we have this prosperity you know for everyone for the family for the society so to get rid of this accumulation and exploitation and things like that and to ensure this feeling of prosperity for everyone in the society these are three things that has to be done right one is ensuring right understanding and right feeling in every individual and for that education is important you know the mainstream education has to do this second is that with this right understanding and right feeling and identification of physical needs now we can do it for the family for the family we can identify the need and we have this willingness to produce right then as a family we can produce more than what is required for all of us and ultimately we have to have a system in the society which is supporting this and promoting this right so supporting this you know mentality of producing more than what is required you know with right understanding and right feeling and also promoting it you know so if it is there we'll support if it is not there the system will work for developing that mentality so that is what is required you know if that is there then we'll have this prosperity for everyone for every family then what these people you know in the past have worked on and found it you know meaningful 
that will be realized in this society in general. So this bringing it to the mainstream education is what is very uh, crucial. And that is what we have been saying time and again. Yes. So this is about the last question. Yes. About this question, uh, <clears throat> this issue of monetary terms, you know, is very um, um, important to understand. And um, many times this monetary issue becomes quite um, uh, illusory, illusory, I would say, you know. Uh, now, as far as this identification of need of physical facilities concerned, it can be done. As far as producing more than what is required of this physical facility, it can be done. And this is real thing. But when it comes to money or currency or any such thing, which is used as a means to exchange this real physical facility, you know, then we have to be very careful. Then we have to be very careful. So the moment we bring in some symbol to exchange our real physical needs or physical facility, then this representation of this physical facility in terms of this symbol, in terms of, let's say, money or currency, then it is there in the mind of the people. It is not there physically. So the correspondence between the money and the physical facility is there in mind of us, mind of human being. This has to be understood. And if the system of the society is such that it is not doing it in a very systematic manner and very kind of transparent manner, then there can be a lot of problems then there can be a lot of problem. You know. In fact, most of the exploitation that we see today is materialized through this process. Through this process. So when you are defining the correspondence between the physical facility and the money, Right. You may define it in an unequal manner. And that will create problem. That will create problem. For example, if you look at the grain which is grown in, in the field by the farmers, Are we really evaluating it in terms of the labor the farmer is putting? Right? The resources that you know farmer has to invest invest during um, production, are they all being taken care of? If not, in the price fixation, if this is not taken care of. And on the other end, what is produced in the industry, right, there you take care of all this cost, plus it's called the interest of the capital, plus the depreciation, plus the profit. Now, if you are counting all that while fixing the price of the industrial product, and you are not doing it while fixing the price of the farmer's produce, then there is exploitation. Because the moment the farmer will in the, you know, involve himself in this transaction through money, through any symbol for that matter, currency or anything, he will be in trouble. He will be exploited. And this man in the industry will get the benefit of it. So this we have to understand. 
So what I essentially I'm wanting to say is that we can certainly define things at the level of physical facility, which is real. But when it comes to monetary, right? If the proper system is not there in the society to decide for this correspondence between the reality and its symbol, right? currency here, for example, then it become very difficult for you to decide how much money will be required. I mean, if uh, you remember, you know, when you were um, children at the age of five, six, or 10, you know, when you were going to school, the fees of the school was very minimal. That was not an issue. Today, that fees of the children has become so important issue, right? So almost 20% of your income you have to invest for the education of the children. Now, what has happened? While deciding the cost of education, we have not developed any proper system. Similarly, health. Today, health has become so costly. So it will keep becoming like that. And now, in fact, health has become almost undefined. You, know? you can fall sick of any amount, 10 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 50 lakhs, 1 crore. So they don't think in terms of what you need. They think in terms of what you have. So if you have more money, you will go to a big hospital and that big hospital will decide all your treatment on the basis of how much money you have. So there is no sincerity, there is no relationship, there is no sense of responsibility. Right. Then, yes, you can never define. You can never define in terms of monetary things. Mm. Yes, and we are already into that loop. In fact, we have lost connection with the reality. And we think money is everything, you know, which is not a real thing. It is a representative only of the real thing. True. I think more and more as we are talking about virtual money, it is becoming even less of a reality. And a lot of times it just becomes a figure in the bank that we keep getting happy looking at the figure increasing or de get unhappy with it decreasing. Yes. Yes. And you cannot hold on to it, you know. <laughs> like if you grow vegetable in your garden and there is lot of vegetable growing because of the right season. Now you feel that it is more than what you require and you would like to share it from others with others. Mm. But this never happens in your bank account, you know. <laughs> True. One more zero is okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um now, we talk about prosperity in terms of producing more, but uh, everybody is not in that producing line. So, supposing I'm in a teaching profession, so I don't produce uh, anything. So, can I have this feeling of prosperity even though I'm not producing anything on the, in, through nature, working with nature? See, <clears throat> I was talking about this family, you know, and defining prosperity in the family. So that is important. That is important, you know. In a family, not everybody is producing. Right? But everybody has a willingness to produce. They are participating in their own way. So for example, if we have three generations in the family, you know, the grandfathers, the parents and the children, these three generations, not that everybody will be producing. And a, a newly born child is not going to produce. Next five years, you know, he has to be facilitated. 
but then you don't think you know that this is a problem right so in the family everybody has this concern and commitment to produce you know, to do whatever they can do and everybody is provided with the basic facilities so i call it distribution not exchange we are not exchanging we are distributing in the family so everybody is provided for the need and everybody is willing to work there this distribution of the physical facility and distribution of the responsibility also takes place with the feeling of relationship so that feeling of relationship is important that feeling of relationship is important so when i am asking this question about my profession and my you know responsibility in the society right am i looking at it as a family am i having this feeling of relationship with all those in the society with whom i am interacting with whom i am working for whom i am working right if i am seeing it as a family if i am seeing things in relationship and there i find that different people have decided to take up different responsibility and that their needs have been assured by the family or by the society at large then i think there is no problem each one of us in the family can have this feeling of prosperity mm -hmm. right with that feeling of relationship with people around me with whom i am working right i can see that the physical facility has to be produced right mm -hmm. so whatever i am consuming either i have to produce or my family members have to produce or my friends have to do it or somebody in the society has to do it so if there is a feeling of relationship and we have divided different responsibilities in the society on the basis of relationship then it is fine so while i am teaching you know the children in the society in the village in the city then it is fine you know with this larger family i have divided you know kind of we have divided these responsibilities and we are fulfilling that responsibility and other members in the family in the society is taking care of my you know physical needs on the basis of relationship hmm. so today the crisis is that very basis of relationship is missing so we are not feeling related to the people with whom i am interacting for whom i am working right number 1 number 2 because i am not feeling related i am not even responsible so in the family okay everybody is taken care of everybody is provided the physical facility that is required for him or her and not discriminated mm. today what is happening if i am in a teaching profession or management profession or things like that i am paid much more than what is paid to those who are growing food so i just mentioning that farmers they are not even getting enough you know for their survival they are putting labor day and night but in return not getting enough you know to um, take care of their field take care of their you know, physical needs and every day they are becoming poorer and poorer and these people in the city who are not producing and who are consuming now they are consuming more and more because they are provided this what is called as salary as money 
with which they can exchange what they have not produced and exchange in unequal terms of exchange. That is the problem. That is the problem. In fact, if you look at the cost of the grain or farm produce over last around 96 onwards, so around 25 years, the salary has increased 10 times, even more than that. But the cost of the produce has increased twice, thrice, that's it. So an unequal, this thing of five times has taken place over the last 26 years. In fact, the um, 96 pay commission, then 2006 and then 2016 pay commission, if you look at the uh, ratio of increase in the pay, it's almost 10 times. And now still they say that, you know, the professors are not attracted towards teaching in India because they are not paid enough. So we have to get them from abroad by paying more and more. As far as farmers are concerned, we are not even paying them, willing to pay them the daily wage, which is around 170 rupees or so. So that is the issue. Otherwise, it is fine. You know, I may decide to take the responsibility of teaching the children in this society. Somebody else takes the responsibility of, you know, producing grains. And then we can distribute it. We can equally distribute to all of us. In fact, this is interesting, you know, uh, the way these Indian villages were uh, planned economically is very interesting. It is said that the farmer has to decide to settle a village. And when he, they are deciding for settling a village, new village, they have to take the responsibility of feeding everybody, you know, every profession, people from every profession who will be there in the village. And there were around 36 types of professions which were identified you know, for the village economy. So they have to take this responsibility and give this assurance to all of them. So you will have this, you know, carpenter and you will have this, you know, blacksmith and you will have this, you know, potter. So all these professions will be there. And all these people have to be given the space, you know, to settle down. It, they should have their own house and then they will work. And they are working for these farmers who is like a guardian. You know. And he has to produce and after every production, he has to make this available to every you know, family who are engaged in other professions. So everybody is assured of food, of their physical needs. And the farmer is assured of any help that is required by any of these professions. So it was considered more like a family where we have these guardians who are responsible for producing and making it available. And there are people, other professions who are supposed to help support this guardian. And there was this you know, notion of distribution, not even the notion of exchange. So when the potter is producing these pots, right, earthen pots, he is not exchanging it with the farmer. He is producing and making available to everybody in the, every family in the society, in the village. Okay. And the return that he gets is not dependent on the number of pots that he provides. He is providing the pots, you know, depending upon the need of the pot. The farmer is making this grain available to him on the basis of the need of the family not on the basis of the number of pots which he is providing. So whatever is grown is distributed in 40 families, 60 families, depending upon how many families are there in the village. So it was more like a family where people had defined their responsibility, they were working for it and they are sharing it. You know, 
not exchanging, but sharing, distributing. So there can be somebody who is teaching, some family who is taking care of the education part. There can be some family who are taking care of the health part, you know, which is fine. But now that's not what it is today. Today, these teachers, these doctors, you know, the term of exchange is very different and which is leading to exploitation. So if you are a teacher, if you are a doctor, you are accumulating a lot of money, resources. And if you are a farmer, you are losing every day. So in the family, it is not important whether I am really physically working or not. But I am fulfilling whatever responsibility I have taken in the society or whatever society has decided for me to take that responsibility, which is quite fine. And I will get enough in the process of distribution in the family. Sometime or the other, we have to start thinking about all these issues. And there are no shortcuts. It's no shortcuts. We have had tried enough for with these shortcuts and they are not working. So this distribution is not the same as bartering. It is uh, true. Bartering the is an exchange. Bartering is an exchange, yeah. Interestingly, if you look at this village, there is distribution, no exchange. Yeah? Yeah, but it's when, like a big family. I mean, inside the family, we don't uh, sort of uh, make a bill for the child's breakfast and then lunch and all that. <laughs> yes, yes, true. And but interestingly, you know, when it comes to this uh, heart bazaar, yeah, which is between these villages, yeah, there you have this barter system or exchange. Yeah. We still have the remnants of those heart, you know, those markets which used to be there once in a week or twice in a week, you know, in specific places. There, when you come, you exchange. You exchange either with through money or exchange directly with other things, you know. So that is barter. So I'm exchanging vegetable for grains. Yeah. But this was not within this village. Yeah. Kavita Pandeji is asking this question in chat. Uh, that while interacting with few parents in my society whose children are at adolescent age, find it difficult to develop right feeling in them. Their problem is that the child gets attracted towards more and more physical facility because of peer group. In such situation, communication gap arises. So she's asking how to tackle such situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what we are trying to work on. So this is not, there is no shortcut. You know, all that we are talking about is necessary for that, you know, that having this understanding in oneself and feeling of relationship with oneself and then you know, developing this in the family. So all that we have to do because uh, the problem is that we are in trouble ourselves individually. The family is in trouble. The society is in trouble. Right. And everywhere this system and the education has developed this mentality of overconsumption, you know, of consuming more and more and producing less and less. I mean, at least the mindset for producing is not there. So with that, you know, the child is likely to get into trouble, which he does get into trouble. And now you in the family are helpless. You know, you can't do much immediately. And the problem is not only that. Deep down, if you ask yourself, you yourself have that mentality. Right. Of indulgence, or at least you want your child to have very high paid job and lot of physical facility. So you are yourself suffering from it. 
so this situation is very grave so there is no immediate solution i would say the long term solution is what we are talking about that first we have to have this clarity about you know ourselves about relationship about you know, the rest of nature and all that and then plan things you know accordingly then we can start working with the family members then we can start working with the society but if i work with myself and i work with my family members many things can be resolved i would say many things can be resolved but it is not going to happen immediately we have to work for it so that is what i would say that these children they get more influenced by the environment because we are not related to them they don't feel related to us right so if we are you know kind of responsible in our relationship then they will pay more attention to us than to the environment to the peer group but our own condition is not very good right we don't have this right understanding we don't have that right feeling in the relationship and we are not able to convey it to the children so they don't relate to us they relate more to the peers and therefore they are more influenced by the peers by the environment in the society so we have to start working on ourselves first then work on the relationship with the family members if we can do these two things then yes it will start showing up result right you may have to keep struggling with it because the environment in the society and the education and the peers they are all you know working otherwise so you will have difficult time but you can see some improvement you can see some improvement but then we have to be more responsible now than what we are i mean we are not responsible towards our own self and we are not responsible towards the relationship with the children with the family members so we have to be responsible and what we need to do as we have been saying right from the beginning is to ensure this right understanding in ourselves and then ensure this right feeling in ourselves if we do that then we'll be able to better relate to the family members they will be able to better relate to our, us and when there is this relationship then the communication take place the dialogue can take place and we can talk about all these issues you know explore investigate right then when they are able to investigate within themselves explore within themselves then they will not be you know coming under influence of the peers or whatever environment is provided by the society in fact when we talk about relationship we will talk on these issues in much more detail chapter 11 we are going to talk about this relationship and there we'll talk about in quite in detail about these feelings in relationship and you know how it reflects in our interaction you know with the family members and with the members of the society and how it can you know affect the present scenario and how it can improve the present condition of our self and our family members and members of the society so i think we'll take up this in more detail at that time uh, charan ji would like to share his yeah. view so namaskar tell uh, what you have been discussing about the distribution system earlier in our society that was not a distribution that was a sharing so this is really and very interesting and and i have really seen in my life therefore uh, i really appreciate what was a uh, very permanent system people has done uh, in that i'll uh, how they were measuring that that system was also that i'm giving an example like it so there are there's a potter there's a barber carpenter so generally they were they were not doing any farming when they distribute uh, share uh, rather than distribute share so they have a uh, measurement for it and the measuring system is also very interesting uh, that was not dependent upon uh, 
how much they are getting from them, but that was dependent upon how much they produce. Uh, say for the annually, whatever grains they are producing. So at the, the final stage, uh, they were giving certain amount of that grain to, to on these people. Similar to that, uh, they require some, say, uh, this butter oil. And so they decide on the basis of in one day, how much uh, uh, milk you have. So that milk uh, is supposed to be uh, distributed to one person, say, to Porta or some to the carpenter. So uh, with after one month or two months, they were giving in this manner that uh, not only that one has got a one cow or another has a five, five cows. So five cows are required to give one, one day milk. Similarly, the person who is having the only one cow, he is giving milk for the one day. So the distribution system is also very fair. Fair in terms of how much you produce, certain amount of that is to be shared. Not only how, everyone has to uh, equally uh, give to everyone. So this is really a fair system. And last time also I have given an example that people were uh, so concerned about each and every one whole village as a family. So everyone wanted to have his uh, uh, required to work for a, say, uh, how to have animal. Then uh, people will giving one animal to each, uh, one sheep or one goat to him, and he will have a, a collecting so many sheep, so many goats uh, after sharing from other other people and have his own uh, uh, as a uh, set of goats or, or uh, sheep, so he can have his own earning like that. So such a wonderful system people has developed, and that's what I have seen myself. I have seen not very long back, not going to the history back. And that has uh, now, of course, not there. <clears throat> now everything is dependent upon money. If I require something, uh, do to carpenter, paid money and get the things done. So that, that system I have seen, which was working earlier. Uh, <clears throat> so that can be brought, even say the, the person who is a, is a teacher or a Vedya. So they were also getting in this term also. Whatever they require, uh, grain or uh, butter oil, milk, everyone, everything, whatever they require, that has been uh, uh, provided by the villagers, the farmers, in this manner, not in terms of money. So that was the system we have seen. But how to bring that system back uh, appears to be, in modern world, appears to be, sometimes appears to be impossible. That how to uh, create a mindset of the people to bring to the earlier level. Because we have, are thinking that earlier we were not <clears throat> happy, we were not comfortable. Now we are going to be comfortable, more and more comfortable. Because we are earning more, we have much more things available. Even people are creating house. Earlier they had a house of uh, local material available. And that was very much suitable to the environment. Say in cold or in a uh, hot summer, that was uh, suitable to them. Now they are creating the concrete houses. They are not neither suitable for the summer nor suitable for a winter. Uh, then they require some artificial means such as a cooler and ultimately lead to AC. So requirement is increasing day by day and people are not in position to fulfill that requirement. So there's much more uh, greed for that and uh, try to get by any mean. So that continuously uh, disturbing the whole system. So that is there. Now, uh, while uh, you were discussing about uh, happiness so i had one one question in mind that if we uh, uh, talk of happiness then oh, certainly we are talking that we need not to accumulate more and more physical facilities that's okay at, at the same time uh, we should not get happy by events uh, say eating uh, good food or taking a ride or going to, going to good places or watching movie or something like so that's uh, uh, event-based happiness is a temporary phenomenon. We ultimately need a continuous happiness. So uh, there I think that event-based happiness also have got some meaning in life. That gives a life in uh, our uh, overall working system or overall system. So we cannot totally uh, discard that, uh, that event has got uh, no place. But how to that celebrate that event and uh, uh, how that uh, to be celebrated in the community in a relationship manner, that is important. And how much is to be uh, 
the time and money is to be spent on that that's also very important now if we then one question comes to my mind that if we require only that much to be uh, collected which is required then what ultimately we should do so that we become uh, happy and have to have a continuous happiness so that's a big question because now in the modern world we thinking that whatever uh, life we have to have a progress means we do more and more and in terms of doing more and more ultimately we get more and more that comes in terms of money being, being collected in bank so if we, you see this is not required then what one should do so that he'll progress that's what we call the progress uh, that's a question uh, modern world is asking everyone is asking and uh, we have to have a concrete direction for this people so this i feel uh, very important and and then he will also be able to define the prosperity uh, happiness and props be both so these two things i i feel that's very important we have to give a direction if not collection is not to car more money is not to car more if we do more more and then more money will be coming then of course material is not required so then what is required what we do for our life since we have got a life a human has a uh, much more better life as compared to other uh, uh, other animals or birds in nature so what uh, he or she should do this is the question i always feel like yes thank you thank you uh, there's there's one more question that uhv professes distribution not exchange at the level of society then are we talking about communism so these kind of questions are, are there uh, yeah, yeah. in the chat yeah, they are very welcome yeah. uh, let me first uh, respond to uh, what uh, charan ji has said uh, what we are saying is uh, not that you know bring back what was there okay. what we are saying is let us understand these principles okay and see whether these principles are relevant today or not relevant today and if they are relevant then we accept them as relevant principles and work our own model so i would not say that you bring back the village and you know that village economy and things like that i would say that let us understand what is the principle in that village economy and then start thinking you know what we can do today on the basis of those principles okay so there is a principle of you know being related to each other and in the process of being related to each other there is a process of sharing right i want to give the other also wants to give in the relationship right? so that the economy of give and give is there right today we have an economy which says you know that i want to take up take away maximum and you want to take away maximum and then we are fighting and then we are somehow managing you know now this is a take take economics so let us decide which economy is you know human and which economy we will go for so at that level things have to be decided first then we can work out the details so i was i had taken this example you know that we have two chapatis and you know two people Right. now how do we decide that we take one chapati each or two each? one no, one person takes two the other is deprived or one willingly offers his two chap in his chapat share also because he feels related the mother for example would feed the child and would prefer to remain hungry but that is giving a sense of satisfaction now all these issues have to be first worked out so i would say that an economy of give and give on the basis of relationship is that preferable or an economy of take and take on the basis of opposition i want to snatch away you want to snatch away you know and then we are fighting and somewhere we are settling down now what is what is this principle that is important so it may be very difficult to bring things back you know because time progresses and things also progress with time right but progressing in the right direction or wrong direction that is important so this is what i mean i have to say on the uh, observation of 
Dr. Charan. Now, regarding the question uh, uh, of Dr. Charan, that we have to have festivals in life, we have to have occasions in life, right, which gives us joy individually and collectively. Right? And of course, they are temporary in nature. So, but but we have to have them. Uh, we can't kind of uh, uh, leave them apart because they are temporary in nature. See, what we are saying is that we should understand what is temporary in nature and what is continuous in nature. And if we understand this difference and then we are working with the temporary, then we are doing it in a man, you know, with this clarity that it is temporary. Similarly, when it is something continuous, then we are inter you know, interacting with it with you know, the clarity that it is continuous. Then there is no problem. The problem is that when it is not continuous and I'm trying to derive something continuous out of it, then we are in trouble. Then we are in trouble. So if the child is born, we celebrate. Right. But we can't expect that child will not grow. It will grow because the body of the child is of the nature of changing. So when it is growing, then we also celebrate. Right. When it is getting married, we have to celebrate. And it, when it parts from the body, it parts away from the body, we have to celebrate. So we understand that this is of the nature of changing and different stages are there and different stages is passing through. So every stage we celebrate, we decide what to do next, how to do next, all those things. So when the child is five years of age, you know, we think that it is time for him to go for you know, learning things, understanding things. And then when he's uh, you know, educated, then he has to take up the responsibility in the society. So that's another celebration. Then he has to settle the family. You know. Then that's another celebration. Yes, we have those celebrations. But we have this clarity that these are all temporary stages. Then this child is with the self, which is continuous in nature. There we have to talk in terms of how to give something which is continuous in nature. So there we have to work for right understanding, which can be continuous in time. We have to work for right feeling in the child, which can be continuous in time. Right? And so on. So we are not saying don't do things with the temporary things. You know, they are there, temporary in nature. So we should realize that they are temporary and we can celebrate with those temporary things you know, in a temporary manner not expect continuity. But then we have to also think in terms of what are continuous things and how do we do with them? You know, how do we celebrate? Right? So I can have a celebration which brings to attention to the child or and every member in the society that here is a self you know, which has to grow, grow in terms of developing right understanding, right feeling. So it is the responsibility of the society as a whole. And this particular self also gives the commitment that yes, I want to grow and I'm willing to take help and guidance from all of you in the society. So that will be another celebration. But now this celebration is talking about, you know, something which is continuous in nature. So all that has to be taken care of. So this is one thing. Second, regarding the second question that if we don't go about accumulating more and more physical facility or producing more and more physical facility, then what do we do? Where is the progress? What will happen to the progress? The answer is very simple. We have to progress in terms of ensuring right understanding, ensuring right 
feeling and relationship. And there is enough scope. We have 700 crores people for whom we have to ensure right understanding. We have 700 crores people for whom we have to ensure this right feeling and this relationship. So big task. So I personally would say that we should think in terms of globalizing the right understanding and the right feeling. When it comes to physical facility, it can be taken care of at a local level. We have done it otherwise. We are not allowing the understanding and the feeling to globalize. We are trying to restrict that. On the other hand, we are trying to globalize the physical facility. And that too with an intention of exploitation, not with an intention of sharing. So we have enough work to do. And that challenge you must have realized, you know, while working with his students. Challenge is a vice chancellor of an university in Rajasthan called Bikaner Technical University. And when he came across this UHB work, you know, and he found it meaningful, then he started working with his teachers, the owners of the colleges. <laughs> then he started working with his staff. Then he started working with the students. Then he found that while they were connecting to the students, their parents also got interested. So now he's trying to connect to these you know, parents. So there is a lot of things to do. A lot of things to do in terms of ensuring right understanding and right feeling in everyone. <laughs> 700 crore people are there. And now that we have this internet and online and all these things, it is possible for us to reach all of them. And it is, you know, what everyone can do. There is so much to do. And if we can do this, we'll have a better society, better world, better individual, better family. So a lot of work to be done in terms of ensuring right understanding in every individual, ensuring right feeling, right relationship in every individual. Then working about out, you know, this ensuring prosperity in every family and in environment of, you know, promoting and supporting this kind of thing in the society, society at the level of states, at the level of nation, at the level of world. A lot of work has to be done. And fortunately, there is enough physical facility which is required to support this kind of system. For example, we have education system, you know, so many schools and colleges have been there, are there, you know, so many teachers have been appointed. All that we need to do there is to place right kind of content of education and right kind of process of education. If we can do that, Every child will have you know, that human consciousness and the human conduct and we will have a human society. So that is what we have to work for. When we change the education, we are all educators. Now, one uh, problem today is that the more education, the more money. I do, I, I completed my PhD for money. Of course, you might say that, no, it is for pursuing my passion and all the things. Ultimately for money only, I completed PhD, my PDF and all the things, I'm completing it. Now in this regard, if not, of it, if it were, if it were not for money, when we bring in the change, what would be the response of educators in bringing the salary, uh, I mean, the, the scale difference, no, try to, once, once, the, once the government try to bring in that a uniform salary for all the people, and you know, higher qualified people facilities, not the salary, when such, such point is brought in as a new education policy, what would be the educator's response? Say, say, degree person, B.Tech person, M.Tech person, Ph.D. person, P.D.F. person. All the people get almost, you know, salary with a very narrow range. 
So what would be our response? How the teaching community would respond to it? Will they accept it based on right understanding? Yes. See, the point I was trying to make was that of relationship. Right? So what I was saying was that we have to have this feeling of relationship. Yes. No, based on the relationship, based on the right understanding, based on the relationship, we teachers, would, would it be, would the, the proposal, would it be receptive to us? I mean, bringing the salary range, I mean, cutting down the salary range, bringing the salary gap very, very narrow in the, in the teaching, in the education, will it be receptive to us? Yeah, your question is done? Yeah. Yeah. So the point I was trying to make was that whenever we are interacting in the society, and this question came up regarding the job of the, I mean, the role of the teacher. So I said that I have a responsibility in this society. Now, what is the basic pers perspective with which I am looking at this responsibility? Am I looking at it with the perspective of relationship or perspective of opposition? That is the issue for me. If I am looking at it from the perspective of relationship, then my tendency will be for distribution. If I am looking at it from the perspective of opposition, then my tendency will be to get more and more without caring for the other. So that is an issue for me, you know. So I can exploit only when I have a feeling of opposition. If I have a feeling of relationship, I cannot think of exploiting. I cannot think of trying to get more for myself and less for others. This fundamental question has to be asked. That how am I looking at, you know, my interaction with other people in the society, with relationship or with opposition? If you settle this issue, then you will be able to decide how much you will take and how much you will give to your relative. So that I will not work out for you. Each one of us can work out for ourselves. A father, for example, would not say that, you know, I will eat more because I'm a PhD. He will Correct. feed the child first. Isn't it? Correct. So, see, these are very fundamental issues now which we have to address to. If we don't address to those fundamental issues, then, you know, we are stuck. The kind of situation that we have created in the society, we are getting into more and more problem and we will get into more and more problem. And I'm not even thinking in terms of giving ready-made solution to it. I'm thinking in terms of looking at the very perception of things, the you know, very basis of our, you know, seeing things. And if they are understood and set right, then probably there will be some solution. Otherwise, there'll be no solution. Correct. Yes, we need to we need to develop a holistic attitude towards. Yeah, yeah. Our view should be more holistic. Yeah. Ultimately. We have to see both the things. One is where we want to reach as an individual, as a collective, all that. And also how to deal with the issues, problems that are there around us, all this global warming and things like that. And third thing is the way that we are going about things. Are we headed in the direction of fulfilling our aspirations or are we in the direction of creating more problems or those problems are they getting less at least
so uh, <clears throat> let me clarify that i am not talking of communism in the sense that <clears throat> physical facility should be made equal what i am saying is that there has to be a feeling of relationship correct you are born out of understanding sir that is very clear from you that uh, uh, what i understood today the bringing the the equality or equal distribution is possible or imaginable only if we have a feeling of relatedness that In i want i am not saying equal distribution i did not use this word equal distribution i only said distribution yeah yeah and just with relationship when you distribute you are not distributing equally for example when you are caring your child you are trying to give more to the child right today what is happening is i am trying to take more with relationship i will try to give more so it is not equal distribution Correct. it is a distribution with feeling of relationship it is as per need rather than as per uh, you know just making it equal yeah today i have is that whatever we are talking about whatever we uh, uh, we talk about the uh, prosperity the process of prosperity or leading to prosperity becomes simpler you know uh, if we have the feeling of relationship that is what i understood today true true in fact all the people on the earth today if they have this feeling of relationship then we will become prosperous overnight because we are already producing six times more correct thank you sir yeah. thank you yeah sir uh, i have a question uh, regarding this prosperity uh, this uh, this distrib you were talking about the distribution yes i do agree that distribution is uh, not properly in this we can see so many poor people they are not even getting food so sir uh, after uh, listening uh, to you sometimes sir i am getting demotivated because uh, sometimes i am feeling that uh, uh, i need not to earn uh, because uh, already i have uh, that much so that i can take my food uh, my clothes and all this so instead of uh, doing work uh, sometimes i am feeling that uh, whether should i do only cooking at home and uh, taking care of my children and uh, i should not do work so that i am getting demotivated uh, and also this uh, about this distribution if it is less more uh, so that is uh, decided by the country not by me uh, so uh, i i was thinking that if uh, it is developed that uh, the sanskar if uh, i can change uh, and also it should change to everyone Uh, that uh, how to make a give uh, how to be a giver instead of a taker uh, so that sanskar if i can develop and if everybody can develop whatever i i have i am happy with that uh, whatever the situation and uh, i will not take anything from others uh, this type of sanskar sanskar of uh, givers instead of uh, takers so that is i think uh, it is comfortable uh, for everyone because sometimes people are always waiting that somebody will give it uh, to me and i will uh, lead uh, i will be there with that their money sometimes children are not working hard working because their parents are earning so much uh, and they are happy with that and they are not doing any work they are not studying like this so how to motivate that sir that to uh, be a uh, givers not a takers uh, so that motivation sir i want from you sir yes let me respond to the first part you know first yes i am not saying don't produce more or don't work more okay i am only saying that we produce more we work more with hmm. the thing of relationship if we do that hmm. it will become more meaningful hmm. this is what i am saying 
okay yeah and my focus was not distribution i just mentioned this distribution as a result of feeling of relationship yes so if i have a feeling of relationship i will think of distribution among the family members so my feel related right and this feel family will become wider and wider for me yes so it will go right up to the world family or the whole existence will become my family so i have so much to work so what i am saying let me explain again you know i am saying that if i have the right understanding where i can see relationship with everything in existence in nature and when i can see this relationship i feel responsible towards everything you know of course to begin with with the human being and then the rest of the things in nature so when i have this feeling of relationship i would like to relate meaningfully to them so i have a much wider con- you know canvas for me to work on then i had before so i will not think in terms of resigning from my work but i will think in terms of making that work more meaningful and in much wider perspective that is what will happen so for example if i am there in your place and if i find that you know i don't have to work only for physical facility or for money then i will not stop working i will start working for you know making this right kind of education available to everybody at least to begin with you know i make it available to every student in my college in my university you know so that's what uh, you know challenge uh, started doing two and a half years he has been able to take it to every teacher every student and now you know taking it to the parents of the children so he re- remains there as a vice chancellor but then he has more meaningful thing to do so what yes. i am saying is that we can be more creative we can be more meaningful once we have this clarity today we have become very limited in our perspective and we are working only for physical facility only for money where is we have much wider possibilities i was talking to uh, dr somani who is the vice chancellor of this medic cap university in indore yesterday you know and he was saying this you know similar thing that you know now i see i have enough earned enough money and enough name and position and everything now why should i you know work with you know continue to work same way i said now there is a big work for us you know to make it uh, kind of uh, a part of the brain stem education something so valuable it has to be made a part of the brain stem education so that's a big job which we have to do we may or may not be paid for it you know but this is what we have to do and now that you are the vice chancellor of an university you can make this university a living model you know for value based living and if you can do it for one university it will multiply i was telling him that we started this experiment on value education with one college for four year, for four years we worked with 180 students but the result that we got out of this in four years it was something concrete and it was adopted by another university with 550 colleges and now it is adopted by ict some 10000 colleges all over the country so we have so many things to do meaningful things to do and we can be more creative if we feel that yes as far as physical facility is concerned we have enough and we don't have to restrict ourselves working only for physical facility we can now work for <laughs> kind of education we can work for the system in the society so all that we can do so this is one thing i have to say about your this thing regarding the children i think the problem basically is that 
we are not able to relate to the children and we are not able to help them see the higher possibilities we are harping on certain very limited things which many times the children don't find interesting and when they do then when they don't find interesting right they are not sincere about it and then we start you know condemning them and when we start condemning them they become reactive so what we really need to do is first to relate to them number 1 number 2 when we they feel related to us you know give them those wider possibilities so much is there in this existence and the human existence if we can help them see the wider possibilities with human existence then probably somewhere they will be able to identify you know what they can do and what they need to do and then they will be self motivated to do it so that is what i think about the you know the young generation that we have to help them see the wider possibilities the bigger possibilities with human existence and with that wider possibility they will be able to make a you know kind of appropriate choice as to what they would like to do and how they would like to participate in the society and therefore what kind of training and education they would require so i think if we can do that i mean not only for our own children in the family but for the whole society you know this young people you know uh, have to be given the right direction right direction i mean i was mentioning one of the days that even in iits now the students are not you know very enthusiastic about studies because they don't find it interesting anymore you know they have put in lot of effort to come to iit but now they feel that okay now that we have come to iit why do we study because they don't see much creativity there they they don't see much meaning there you know the only meaning that they had was to get to iit and get a good job and they think that now you will anyway get a good job with the degree of iit so why study so what i am saying is that we have to help them first we have to relate to them second we have to help them see the wider possibility you know of human existence that we are talking about you know. then they will find out something creative something meaningful for themselves and then they will prepare themselves for it and contribute in the society in that meaningful manner we'll have lecture number 5 uh, tomorrow so with that we'll close thank you very much